Hi, welcome to Don's Manufactory. Today's update, working on Betsy. I uh, was running low on steel, so I had to go get some, which I did. Um, I am designing and fabricating subframe connectors for Betsy. And uh, I had to go get some plate to make the uh, mounting plates for the rear section. So that's what I'll be building today is uh, all of the plates and gussets that are involved in attaching the subframe connectors. And uh, I've also been working on fitting the floor. So let me show you. I'm putting a floor pan in too and so I'm sort of incorporating the subframe connectors and the floor installation all at the same time. It's time to start cutting some steel plate and getting these uh, subframe connectors built. So um, that part of it will be in time lapse. So um, I may have something to say at the end of it. I don't know. Whatever. Here we go. Okay, so I'm putting the floor in here because I need to make sure that the subframe connectors don't interfere with the floor pan or vice versa. Um, so at this point, it's all screwed in into position so that it should be give me an accurate measurement. Uh, what I'm doing here now is I'm adding a hundred thousandths plate to the side of the subframe connector. This, this connector goes into the forward section where it has to uh, basically connect together or add itself to the floor support, the torque box, and the forward frame rail. The frame rail is 100,000 thick, and the floor support is to the outside of that. So I have to put these little spacers in there so that the tube then interfaces with the floor support correctly and will just fit inside the forward frame rail. So the bottom of it's been trimmed to 100 thousandths. I've got a 100 thousandths plate on one side and a 200 thousandths little straps on the other side. I was really worried about this bending after I put these, welded all this stuff together, but I kept cooling as I was going like I was working with the sheet metal and in the end, the tube was still straight after all of that welding. That's not typical when putting a strap on the side and then welding the outer edges. Okay, here I'm just, uh, I gotta prep the floor support for the the connector and the, they're pretty beat up, you know, 300,000 miles down the road and uh, they've got a lot of bumps and I don't know, just, shall we call them, uh, deformations. So I uh, did quite a bit of straightening. I had to make a tool to do some, to get at it because I already had the, the uh, tow boards in. I mean, I should have done this maybe before the tow boards went in, but uh, I didn't. Okay, so here what I'm doing is I'm actually cutting the rear section now. Um, I have to, I'm just trimming the back edge of it off at a 45 degree angle. So I just cut away the metal and leaving me a flap that I can then pound over and weld up. My welding, uh, improved quite a bit. Well, it's hard to say. Uh, basically I've, uh, I'm working with a way heavier material. Uh, than the rusty sheet metal on the car. So it's it's easy. <laughs> it's very easy to weld this stuff. There's no galvanizing. There's nothing. It's clean metal. Okay, so it's looking good. So now I'm uh, cutting the plate. Boy, it sure helps to go get a new blade. Um, I'm just cutting the plate. This is out of a hundred thousandths material. And this is the plate that will weld to the side of the rear subframe connector section. And then it will weld to the subframe and the torque box. I guess it's just the rear subframe, mostly. Yeah, it is. 
And it goes back far enough that I'm picking up the bolt for the uh, spring. So the actual torque from the spring will be directly acting on this plate, which will be directly acting on the subframe connector. Okay, same problem here. I'm going to be welding all on one side. The idea is, can I do it and not warp the thing? And I succeeded here by keeping it cool again and taking my time and welding it. The uh, holes I drill are, I think these are 3 8 um, So they're pretty good sized plug welds and there's quite a few of them so my goal of course is strength some might say that i'm over engineering but uh, i'm really trying to make this a fairly rigid structure So here's the subframe connector just sort of clamped in place and set to zero degrees, same as the front subframe. And uh, as you can see, my box is a little messed up there, so I'm going to have to space it in order to get it to be placed right. But it doesn't hang any lower than the exhaust system. Cool. This little angle finder, uh, that really worked well. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I am making some... Uh, uh, a way to reinforce the weld that's going to be between the sections. So the front half of the rear section and the rear part of the front section, I'm adding these little tanks to it. This seemed like the right thing to do. And what I'm doing is I'm making these little tanks here that have a 60 degree offset that has a 10 degree bend in it. So it essentially sleeves this piece here. See, driver front, you line it up and you slide it on. This will be plug welded and it'll also be seam welded around here and I can uh, grind this off at a nice 45 and let it penetrate all the way down to these tangs so I get a really nice full weld all the way around. Um, I decided to put these tangs in because I just don't trust my welding. Anyway, so that's it. It has nine and a half degrees of offset this way in order to line up with the rear section of the connector and it has a five and a half degree downward slope to accommodate the floor pan as it goes down under the seat pan. Still got more prep work to do, more holes to drill and galvanizing to grind off, but it's all there waiting to be assembled. The rear could be welded, uh, but I still have holes to drill in the front. Got the forward piece primed except for where the welds are gonna go so it is ready for installation tomorrow morning but yeah I'm not installing I had to get the paint where remembered I gotta stop the rust ah! okay okay so there it is welded in all the plug welds are done yeah but I still have these welds here to do in the center section, but the rear section is all welded in, see? And it is really rock solid. Crawling under Betsy here today. I have all this welding to do. So, because there's, this is a hundred thousandths, the frame rail is a hundred thousandths, and the floor support is 65 thousandths. So 265 thousandths thickness worth of metal. And for welding, 
if I just left it the hole, the arc would want to jump to the side and I wouldn't get any penetration down deep in the hole. So I just countersunk it till I had only one layer of metal left. And that allows me to start the arc all the way down in the bottom of the hole and start building the puddle and then just keep going around, around, around and fill up the countersink. Uh, gives a good strong weld for that. It's been dented up here. And I made a little tool so I could drop a 5 16 bolt down through here and pull this down to straighten it out as much as possible, which I did. And it's as good as it's going to get, so I'm going to weld it up. Okay, so here I'm strapping the car. Um, <clears throat> it's about half an inch wider at the back of the door opening than the front. So I'm strapping it up and pulling it together, and my hope is that when I weld the connectors that it'll stay that way. <laughs> okay, so now I'm drilling the little tangs and putting screws in to pull them up flush them tight so I get a really nice clean weld. And now I'm welding. I always have trouble welding upside down. If I don't move the gun just right, uh, the pool, weld pool, starts to dribble down back into the gun and then it stops penetrating and I start having trouble. Takes The settings have to be absolutely perfect if I'm welding upside down. Okay, I released the straps, measured it, and guess what? It sprung back right where it was. Well, everything is welded. I've got some touch-up welds to do. And then there was one spot weld that I totally forgot to weld, so I have to yet to do that. But both sides are welded in. It's looking pretty good. Hi, welcome to Don's Manufactory. Hey, it is a glorious day to... Let me take these off so I, I'm not yelling. It's a glorious day here uh, in Betsyville. Making the last two gussets for the subframe connectors. These are uh, gussets that go on the very bottom of the rear torque box that stop the subframe connector from twisting. Well, here's the bracket. It's uh, set up so that it is welded to the bottom of the subframe connector and this goes up the side of the subframe connector this welds to the torque box as does this it's open on the back so water can drain out and I will seam seal these joints and around all of this so that water doesn't get in there and rust it out and uh, it'll all be painted and everything so that's my idea that's one bracket now I gotta turn this here flat plate. I gotta turn this one into one of these. And uh, I guess I'll put that in, uh, I'll run it in time lapse. So you can just see the process. When it comes to bending all of these things, I'm just using my vise. So uh, sequence is everything. Just like Barry says, sequence is everything about which bends to do first so that you can end up with a good looking piece. Yes, sequence is everything. Uh, if you haven't yet, check out uh, Barry over at Joe Daddy's Garage. Uh, he really knows what he's doing. So here I bend the plate, do a great job, realize that I've made another right side plate instead of a driver's side. So now I have to unbend it and rebend it. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you know, unbending and anyway, the idea is I got to have mirror imaged pieces. Uh, it managed to bend without becoming fragile, so I went ahead and used the part. Once again, I'm using uh, three eighths holes. I mean, my plug weld size is three eighths on this particular plate.
Okay, here I have to grind off the galvanizing so that I can get a good clean weld. And I'm just fitting the part in there, figuring out how I'm going to clamp it, how I'm going to weld it. Um, ended up having to use the jack just to get really tight fitting between the parts. I kind of like this part. It reminds me of the torque box in the front, so it, it looks very Mustang-y. And of course, even though it's under the car, I'm still going to grind all the welds and dress everything off so it looks real nice. And it'll look really nice when it's painted and undercoated. Well, just finished welding the last of the subframe gussets. Give you a little look, see at them here. Right underneath here. You can see them. I put it I just welded these in. Here it is. I got the uh, little end bracket put on here where it picks up the seat pan. And uh, I got it all done on both sides. So that is the last of the welding on these things. Now it needs to be prepped and painted. I have scuffed the connectors with 100 grit sandpaper. And now there's osfo on there. And you can see them starting to turn gray. And that's because the acid is etching the steel. And the way you tell if the etching is enough is that the rag will have a lot of drag. Drag on the rag. When you wipe it off, it just pulls really hard. Now, normally the rag would slide real easily because the metal is all kind of got a bright, shiny surface on it. But this is dragging really nice, so it's got a really good etch on it, which is exactly what I wanted. I'll be uh, prepping and painting the subframes and connectors and everything today. Um, the idea is to get everything protected that I won't be able to get to after the floor goes in. First coat of primer. I even did the insides of the rear frame rails. These uh, were treated with Ospo and etched and then primed and then two coats of black. So they're ready now, painted, protected on these upper surfaces. So when the floor goes in, I don't have to worry about uh, getting at it and trying to protect it when it's so close to the underside of the floor. And here's a picture of the finished product. You know, I can't wait to drive her.